Right, like these couches and exactly. the yeah, 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 And yeah. then all of a sudden the yes. lights come up and yes. fucking Kid Rock comes yes. rolling in. And, yes. And Roger Clemens came around. I don't remember. Roger, Roger Clemens! Is it I, John I, Steinbrenner? I, 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 you know, I do remember. <laughs> is I rolled in with 18 Hooters girls. Yes, yes. Right? Yeah, that's what I remember. That was a great, that was my favorite party of all the Super Bowl parties that were gone to. Many of them uh, of age. <laughs> Art Spender, ladies and gentlemen, is here. Oh, Mr. Spender, how are you, sir? Good, how are you doing? Good. Not our Carney, Art Spender. Oh, boy. All right, we were... There he is, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, great Art Spender. All right. How are you, Art? Are, are we rolling now, Robin? All right. Are we rolling? Are we rolling? Yeah. I don't know if we should pretend, because I want to run this on Sunday on my podcast. So can we pretend it's Sunday or just... Uh, no, you don't want to pretend it's Sunday. Do you want to pretend it's Sunday? Nah, fuck it. <laughs> let's do it live. We'll do it live. All right. You ready? Yeah, let's go. When were you in Philly? Was that August? Yeah, training camp. That's right. That's training camp. All right. Here we go, kids. All right, we're on Radio Row, and the week will not complete, will not be completed, and my week and my brain is completed. Maybe we should start from the top again, even though we're live. I need more coffee. Take two. You take two. Take two on a live stream. This is the first time I've botched one. Well, I just usually just go. All right, we're here at Radio Row, and the week is winding down, and so are my brain cells, as this is the 7,000th Super Bowl for me, actually 29. This guy who's joining me now, we rolled. When we rolled hard, and we rolled all night long. I can't do it anymore, but he can, because he works at the NFL Network. He's on DirecTV, the original man on the Red Zone channel, and now you see him on NFL Network. Well, I'm schlepping. He's working hard for you. The great Andrew Siciliano, my former partner, when we rolled hard and deep into the night in Houston. Hello. We'll be back next year going to that same party. I yes. Hope. The Warren Moon party. Yo. How are you, man? How are you? It's my 16th. I just figured it out. 16. This is 29 16. for me. But and I should because I'm like twice your age. My first was with you. Really? You that, never forget. That, that sounded funny. I'll never forget my first Super Bowl with you, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> and it was uh, it was the Ravens and uh, and the Giants in Tampa. That's right. Right. Yep. And I believe uh, we started a tradition truly unlike any other. With without the Augusta music, on we went out Tuesday night to that Ybor City, the Ybor City. Yeah, I, I know we call and, it Ybor and City. We, I believe, at one point during the night, I was on top of a bar. Mm -hmm. I believe I broke our producer Evan Mandelbaum's cell phone. He might have been stealing receipts to fudge expense accounts at that point. Anyway, I don't, I don't know. But all I remember is that the next morning. They had to pound, I had to pound on your door after someone pounded on my door mm -hmm. to wake me up. Then I woke you up, and then we did the show, and I don't remember anything about the show whatsoever. I don't either. It was, it was ridiculous. And then that was the tradition now, that every Wednesday morning moving forward in the Super Bowl, we would do the show uh, without sleeping and, let's just put it kindly, without recovering from the night before. <laughs> and may still be under the effects of the night before. Exactly. No, that was a lot of fun. I, I don't know I don't know how we did. I mean, I'm older, but I don't know how we did those because we would be on the air till 9. Actually, on the East Coast, it was, uh, what time were we on on the we East on, Coast? We were on at 8. The worst was San Diego. Yes, because we had to be on at 5 a.m. At 5, and there was, I think, one night we actually just went straight in. Exactly. But you know what's happening here now? For example, Boomer and Carton do their show. They're on... They would have to be on at 3 a.m. here. So they tape their shows during the day, and they say, screw it, we're not going to get up and do a show in an empty convention center at 3 a.m. So they get all their stuff and tape it in the it's afternoon. the right way to do it. I agree. Our, our, our morning show, and well, our former morning show, NFL AM, uh, shot in L.A. on for 6 in New York, 3 a.m. Correct. In L.A., and I would have to do that show every now and then. Our meeting would be at 1 a.m. Our rundown meeting at 1 a.m., <laughs> And well, I could make that. See, that's easier at 1 a.m. because you're not really going to sleep. Except then. you got to go to sleep if you're doing the show every day. You can't. No, you it, don't. Yeah, you sleep is over. Okay, right? try that for a week. <laughs> it's one thing to try it for a week at the Super Bowl when you're out having a good time and seeing friends and partying. Um, and remember, by the way, we do it for the people at home. That's right. Okay. We're not doing this for us. No, no, no. We're not partying. We're not doing it to try to pick up women and have people kiss babies and slap backs. We're not doing it for that at all. We do it for you. So because, hard. because they would not be able to do this with it if not for us. It, it, it's it's sharing the experience. Exactly. 
Right, I don't know where I was. But anyway, 3 a.m. shows, when you're doing it every day, it's... Well, hey, we're not digging ditches. Let's stop complaining. Exactly. Now, last time I saw you was August. You were in Philly. We had, uh, we had, we noshed a little bit. Yes. And that, training you camp. Covering training camp, right? Yes. Now, uh, you want to do that again? I have no idea. We did, like, uh, eight in eight days. So I had a good time. Ended up in St. Louis to the Rams last and uh, then went home. That was, that was fun. I just did the Senior Bowl and the East-West Shrine game. So actually back in Tampa, St. Pete. So that was like 12 days on the road um, and now here. But again, no complaints. But this is, uh, you know, San Francisco. This is like my town, if you know that. Well, it's all, you were big here, too, with me. I, I cannot tell you how many times this week, or I, I was up here for a Raider game in August, how many times in San Francisco I get stopped and people ask about the show. Oh, you know who asked about the show recently? Who? Um, interviewed Dirk Cutter. When Dirk Cutter? The head coach of the Buccaneers. Exactly. He was at when, Arizona State, right? Exactly. When he got the job, the day they announced him, and then uh, Cutter, Cut, I didn't even. Yeah. <laughs> and as we were signing off, like after, after we, we pre-taped the interview, and we were talking afterwards, he said, "I used to listen to the show every day back in the day." Yeah, it's amazing how many people did. I mean, you run because you know I know we doing this all the time. We know a lot of these athletes. You know, we don't need to have somebody go to the handler and say, "Hey, can you come over?" You to are show? You, you are the athlete. I am the you handler. are the radio athlete. I go out and I and, and you do the same thing. When you on radio road, somebody tries to grab you, right, to sit you down. How many interviews? have you done with radio stations here? Uh, I, I've, I haven't been here in this room much. It's only my second time. I came down here Wednesday to like five or six and then uh, and then got out. Did you go on with Sioux Falls, South Dakota? I did not do I get back. Falls. See, I, I don't just do top ten markets. Oh, I'm willing. Oh, I, I am not. Now, would you go on like a Syracuse radio station oh, right here? Would you go on with them? Absolutely. I went on with a temple station here to there get back go. up. Oh, you're converting? No, no, not that time. Oh, you didn't go to Temple okay, University, my yes. My fault, my fault. Very good. Yeah, I, I did. I don't know how many. I don't either. I, I don't just, I, it's, it's all and, But you know, right, as we tape this on Friday, is that this is a you-know-what show by the time we get to Friday. Yes. Like, Wednesday's still kind of quiet. Yeah, no, mo- right? I was here Monday, and there was nobody. You could shoot a cannon through this place. Right. And there were actually guys outside with cannons. Not Marcus to, Cannon of the no, Patriots. No, no, that's great Marcus Cannon uh, knowledge right there. <laughs> Or Isaiah Kanan, Cannon of the 76ers, the former good point guard, right. who's now just like the third string point guard for the 76ers. The Sixers are still a team? Uh, last check, they're still in the league. I had no The idea. Lakers are trying to surpass them for the tanking uh, award for 2016. Feeling you. Exactly. <laughs> I haven't seen Vic the Brick here, though. I, I have not seen him. Have you him. smelled his hat? No. Okay, we love Vic the Brick. Yes, we on do. On AM570 in Los Angeles, how but his smells. How could he not be at Media Day with the circus that debacle has become? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. There was uh, there's that Nickelodeon kid, uh, what's his name, the guy with the superhero costume. He was doing all the good yes. ones. Well, I tell you, Rich, our friend Rich Eisen, did it the right way. Rich had uh, J.B. Smoove. I love you J.B. Know, Smoove, yes. From Curb. But yesterday, he sent Snoopaloop to the pressers. I saw that, yeah. And obviously he asked Peyton about getting the discount for the Pop Johns. Um, but the reaction, because, you know, you expect that stuff only on Monday, but to have it on Thursday, and it's just Snoop, I mean, that was got really good stuff. You know, I interviewed who has probably the biggest impact in Media Day is comedian Greg Gass, the guy who was asking the Peyton Manning questions, and it had like a million YouTube hits because NFL Network called it the best of the media night interviews. And this guy had this great routine where he asked Peyton Manning questions that only he can answer, and the answer to every question was Omaha. And apparently <laughs> it, it, it became so viral that every... And then he did a Adam Sandler off with Frank Caliendo, and that was pretty huge, too. I, I missed that. i got to go back and find that. You have to find it. Find the one of media day with, with Greg Gass is his name. He does a lot of voices on Family Guy, Comedian, and a friend and who started in the comedy business with our own Brody Stevens. Bro- Brody is my friend. Brody is That's your his friend. Twitter handle. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <That's right. laughs> We're with Andrew Siciliano here. What's the matter, Robin? What's the matter? She's stealing your phone. Ask me to get on the... It's Craig, not Greg. I, did I say Craig or Greg? I, I, I've heard it both ways. Craig Gass. I've heard G-A-S-S. it both ways. And he's, he, he does a Tom Arnold impersonation that is dead on. There's not much demand for Tom Arnold impersonators. I was going to say, does that pay the bills? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's great. He does we a love lot Tom of great. Arnold. He does a lot of great stuff. So, the game's coming up. Yes. Do you know who's playing? You have uh, to. You work at NFL I, I Network. I do know it's the Browns and the Eagles. Exactly yes. right. 
Who's the Browns coach now? Can you keep, can you keep Hugh Jackson. Of... Now, why don't you respond to my tweets whenever I take a cheap shot at the Cleveland Browns? What, like on Sundays? On Sundays, no, I... No, not during the NFL games when you're on NFL during a direct ticket, the Sunday ticket. I'm talking about, like, during the week. You'll tweet something out, and then I'll respond to you, and you completely ignore me. What the hell's up with that? I, see, I have... A, can we discuss... Let, let's discuss social media uh, rules. Etiquette. So we, etiquette. Thank you. Rules of I don't use. I don't use profanity. No, 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 no. Let me finish. See, I used to prescribe to the theory, and I'm now getting away from it, that if you have someone's phone number, why would you ever tweet them? <laughs> right? That was what... But, but then... But no, but, I just but respond now, to your tweets as a joke to have fun. I get it. Now... I have seen the error of my ways. And it wasn't you that I was giving the cold shoulder to. It was, you know that. It was a broader Twitter initiative of how I wanted to do it. Like, like, like years ago, I tweeted at a friend and tweeted back, and then he, he called me. He's like, why are we just talking on the phone? Well, it wasn't a direct, it wasn't something to me. It was just you put out a tweet, and then I respond to it with a joking reply, and then I figure that engages the masses. Alex Reith with everybody, NFL Network PR. See, I have my back turned to the crowd behind me, though. So you get to check out all the talent, and I have to look at you, which is an outrage. Well, I mean, Chuck Pagano's walking in. Where is Chuck? I didn't see him. He's wearing the cold blue suits. I just look for girls here. I don't care about coaches and uh, players and stuff. I'm tired of those guys. Well, then there is talent here as well. Yes, there is. All right, who do you like? Uh, Who do I like? Are you allowed to give a prediction? No, of course you work for the NFL Network. So no, 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 no. Uh, I've been saying the whole time the Panthers, although I don't think it's the blowout that that some people foresee. I do think it's a game of the fourth quarter. There's going to be something on NFL.com tomorrow where they ask everyone that draws a paycheck in the media group for a prediction. And I actually switched to the Broncos. I don't know why. With the points or to win the game outright? Well, I'm not allowed to talk about that. I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, but actually to win. You think the Broncos I, I, can I, win? I, but, but now... I'm almost, as you know, with everything in my life, mostly with women, I second-guess everything. So I'm now, even now second-guessing my Broncos pick. But I, I just I can't see it being like two years ago because the defense is too good. Like Apollo Creed said, there ain't going to be no rematch. I, I don't, I don't, there ain't going to be no blowout. I don't think it's a blowout, and I legitimately think Denver has a shot at the end. And what a story it would be. Oh, absolutely. If he could ride off on the white horse like that. See, if I were in Vegas with our buddy John Avello at Wynn Las Vegas, I would place two bets. Not because I'm, I'm hedging. Well, it would be hedging. I think Carolina wins the game, so all this big money is on them outright in the money line bet, which is straight up, no points. And then, of course, Denver getting the points. So you can bet on Carolina to win the game straight up and then bet on Denver with the points to keep it a close game and win both ways. That's the ultimate degenerate gambler or just for entertainment purposes watching the game with their block pools at home mm-hmm. kind of a fun way to do it and you're not in any way degenerate no i'm not i don't i don't actually gamble unless i'm in vegas i will not bet on the game I, i'm having my own party i'm not going to bet we may do a block pool where you're, you're having your own i'm hosting my super very first party super bowl party in san jose hello hello you coming down uh maybe before no the party i have to, I have to let you know because i have my own list so there will be velvet ropes. There will be the big guy at the door. And nobody just getting into this party. What is that? Velvet? Velvet ropes. <laughs> <laughs> so you, Bill Romanowski, and Neil Smith, who obviously both played for the Denver Broncos mm-hmm. and won Super Bowls, are the only three people I've talked to this week who think Denver's going to win this game. Outright. Uh, again, I'm now second guessing my Friday flip flop. Wait a minute, you just made the pick, and now you're I changing already. I understand it. No, no, I, like I'm torn. I, I don't, I don't know how they're going to win. I just legitimately think something tells me. I mean, go, go back to Week 17. Okay, just, just think about. I can't think back that far. Okay, how, I'll try to that? do it for you. How, and I haven't slipped. How crazy everything. So heading into Week 17, if they won the game, they being Denver, there was a roadmap for them to potentially get to, right. to number one overall. Obviously, the Patriots lost. They blew it. The door is open, and bam, they're number one overall. But it was supposed to be Brock Osweiler. He got benched at halftime. Just think about, let's say they didn't bench him, and they won the game. We're sitting here today talking about, wow, how crazy is it that Peyton Man is going to be watching the Super Bowl? Exactly. And now... We have this ridiculous narrative. And like the what if, like Dave Damashek, I had to call the compass, he, and if L. Like, what if. They still do the baby making picks. His he kid does. is no longer a baby. Yes. I don't get that. Football baby? Tell Dave that football baby is no longer a damn baby. <laughs> I will pass along your kind words about his child. 
Okay. He's a cute kid. <laughs> but I find that rigged. I think the kid is tipped off. I don't are, think the kid are, are actually makes the pick. Are you suggesting? That football baby is a rigged are, uh, uh, bit on uh, NFL.com. Suggesting that something on television is fake. Yes. Okay. And I'm not talking about a lot of the females that we see who are acting as reporters no, here. No, but the X-Files are back, so the truth is out there. Yes, it is. Yes. I think. Um, the, so you, the if you change your pick again since you made your pick and then flip-flop, you're going to go back to the original pick before we're done here? No, I'm going to go with the Broncos. I don't know how or why, or I think I, I something just tells me that on Monday we're flying out of here going, wow, how did that happen? And I don't know how it would happen. I will but say they that do anyway. have the number one total defense in the National Football League for a reason. I will be saying that Monday no matter what happens. How, how did this happen? How did this all happen this week? I mean, it's generally speaking, you wake up. <laughs> you know there's 250, there's 200 and... 67 games, not including the preseason, regular season, postseason. And after game 267, I think most years you step back and go, how the hell did that happen? How do you know all you know? Because you've done them all. Well, it's 256 in the regular season. That's easy. And there's 11 playoff games, 5-5-1. Five, five, and one. I, I, I figured that out. Well, there you go. That's because you sit Math. there every Sunday afternoon watching every single game. Math. Yeah. I and I once math. quite infamously... Uh, Screwed up my math on TV. Well, no, somebody here was somebody was here yesterday and ripped you. Not ripped you, but Go said. Ahead. Uh, Rip away. No, Nate Lundy. Nate, <laughs> Nate Lundy, Lundy, our buddy say. Nate Lundy, said that he caught you slipping once on a, doing a highlight, and instead of calling, you called someone Nate Lundy. Did I? Yes. And who was the player? I will. I don't. What other Lundy would there? Ryan Lindley? I, no, I, not I, Ryan Lindley. There was a player named Lundley. Uh, and you called it because you know, and you slip. You know what happens when right. you're doing live stuff. I, uh, it happens when you do it live. I, I, you're, you're showing you that London. looks fantastic. Somebody, London. what are you showing Andrew pictures of, Robin? Oh, the women that are going to be at the party at my Super Bowl party. I mean, you're giving me reason to show up. Clearly, exactly. Yes, I may be able to get you on the list if you make a decision and don't waffle on your prediction. Not Mike Waffle. No, no. <laughs> Rams assistant. Mike Waffle. Um, <laughs> I, what was the one I screwed up recently? Uh, I'm not trying to go through your no, screw I'm I, just saying I, Nate Lundy told me that you said Nate Lundy. We got Lundy a lot of names in our heads. He said somebody else named Lundy. I said Carson Wentz went to uh, Boise State instead of North Dakota State last week. That one angered me. Did people get angry and tweet you and say, oh, everyone in North Dakota got fired up? Exactly. They, they got... That's why we can't make mistakes. Fired that's up. why this is a flawless segment. There are no errors. No. You can go back and go over this, and you will find not one actual statistical or factual error has been... Uttered. No, we've never been wrong. It's like Johnny Mansion Krylon. No runs, no drips, no errors. Right? <laughs> remember that one? Absolutely. <laughs> I don't know how you remember that one, but I do. Even when I was a kid, I... I think that's how I first knew who Johnny Bench was. Exactly. He's the guy selling me spray paint. And Andrew's now being shown a picture of Playmates. Okay. I don't think he needs I, any more incentive to I want to come it. to my party. They're attractive. Come to the, go to my website. And you know what? They also seem friendly. They're very friendly. Yes. <laughs> they were friendly the other night when I met them. Very friendly. That was only on Monday night in San Jose. So yeah. imagine Super Bowl Sunday. You do, do you know the way there, though? Absolutely. Okay. I know the way to San Jose. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen. We're like a bad lounge act. We really are. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew Siciliano, as you can tell, it's Friday. We are both mentally and, well, not physically, but mentally shocked at this particular Loopy, time. Loopy, uh, snoop loopy uh, yeah, all of that. Loopy fiasco, by the way, who was not here this week at the Super Bowl. All right, your best Super Bowl was what? Wow, I don't remember now. I just remember the, I don't remember the games anymore. I just remember the parties. And I don't remember, I, I, we talked about that. Houston, they're going back to Houston next year. And people think Houston and Detroit, they couldn't have been great Super Bowl cities because it's Houston and Detroit. Right. The best times I've had in all the Super Bowls, all these great places, San Diego, Tampa. San Diego was good. San Diego was good. But the parties in, in Houston and Detroit, remarkably excellent. I remember those. And you and I were there. And in Tampa, we went to a couple parties. Tampa was good. We did the windows to the walls back in the day when yes. that was high. Detroit snowed all week. Remember? Yes. But I had a... <laughs> Don't... A massive yellow Hummer that I was driving around town. Do you remember that? Yes. Because we had a deal with Hummer. Hummer? With, 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 that was like the official yes. sponsor. And so I had, but it was bright, bright, bright yellow. Not that there's anything wrong with it. It's like your tie today you're wearing today. Yeah, that's, that's kind of a green. Uh, I know. You and point. you know what the best part of that Detroit, that was the vivid party with the three floors oh, up. Boy. And then yeah. we were up on the top row, yes. and we were getting women in. And all the players were calling us, asking us to get them in 
to that vivid party. All right, well, we'll do the reporter question. How does that make you feel? <laughs> well, when players are calling me to get into parties, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. That's why he's Andrew Siciliano. That's why he's on the NFL Network. And he's on Sunday Ticket on DirecTV. And he gets to go to the DirecTV parties, and I don't. Good to see you, man. And ask. I wasn't invited, man. It was Dave Matthews last night. Was there any marijuana in the air? Uh, oh, that's what that was. <laughs> that's ever, what that was. Have you ever been anywhere near a Dave Matthews con- I concert? I believe that was not? like my 35th or 40th or so. I had to count them up. Wow. I hadn't been in like five years, to be honest with you. And uh, it was quite... It was nostalgic. It was great. Did he refuse to do, like, satellite no, in his all, hits? with maybe two exceptions, he played, played the hits. You better play the damn hits yeah. if you're at the Super Bowl. Uh, and old school stuff. This yeah. isn't uh, Charlottesville, Virginia anymore, pal. No. This is the damn Super Bowl. It was you play not. the damn hits here. It was not. It was a, uh, it was a great venue. And uh, Pharrell is there tonight. Scotty Pharrell, I love him. <laughs> He's going to be talking hockey right, <laughs> until midnight. Will he be playing heavy metal in the background? He'll, 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 he'll be gargling gravel <laughs> and, and, and talking hockey until uh, midnight. And then uh, tomorrow is uh, the Red Hot Chili Peppers. And what party is that? The and ESPN again, Direct party? TV's doing three straight oh, wow. nights of uh, fiestas. Beautiful. Well, yeah. I'm sorry I'm going to miss them. I'll Aeosone be in Sonoma. Fiesta. I'll be in Sonoma getting yeah. absolutely, I'll be drinking myself dead with red wine in Sonoma on Saturday. The only day off. Good to see you, Andrew. Thank Likewise. you so much. Andrew Siciliano, as we would say. Siciliano. From uh, Direct TV's uh, NFL Network. Do you have any other jobs that I could mention? Uh, do the Rams games. Uh, preseason. Uh, in Los Angeles this year, too. You won't even have to go to St. Louis. Don't have to get on a plane. Um, and uh, I think that's it. All right, that's it. I think I also sleep. And say goodbye to all the folks out there watching us on Periscope. Uh, goodbye. The world. I forgot we were being, I'm being filmed. We're live. We're live on Periscope.